welcome to atc my emergency channel today we are going to talk about uh, discuss about a young adult patient with abdominal pain acute onset of pain so let's start now okay the 26 year old adult male had come to the er with complaints of acute abdomen in the first initial 10 second assessment patient was conscious oriented obeying commands and able to speak one full sentence so we went with our primary assessment in the primary assessment airway patient was able to talk in full sentences there were no gurgling sounds or stridor or hoarseness no pulling of secretions or fallen tongue and in breathing patient's respiratory was 22 beats per minute saturation was 99% in room air chest movements were bilaterally symmetrical no use of any accessory muscles no added sounds and in the circulation part the heart rate was 100 per minute blood pressure was 130 by 74 all pul peripheral pulses were felt no active bleeding at this point, we put in two large IV cannulas at this moment and disability score GCS was E4, V5, M6. Pupil size was bilaterally 2.5 mm and reactive and pain score was 9 by 10 numerical pain score. At this moment, for, due to the pain, we had given him injection paracetamol 1 gram IV stat and GRBS was 137 and in the exposure wise, patient was febrile and hypothermia was prevented by giving him a blanket. After this primary survey, we went to the secondary survey. Now. Regarding the signs and symptoms, the patient developed acute onset abdominal pain in left loin to the groin area and uh, one hour back. Ma'am, There was no any history of vomiting, fever, burning maturation or hematuria or any trauma. There was a past history of lower back pain two days ago ma'am, which lasted for 30 minutes and it subsided on its own. There were no any allergical med medications, there nil, no medications taken by the patient and in the past there is a surgical history of Hernioplasty on the right side and left side varicocele surgery done three weeks back, ma'am. Oh. And he has ingested last minute five hours ago. Now reassessing the primary survey to any to see any improvements, the pain score is still eight by ten, and he hadn't got relief anything with the paracetamol injection given. So now we had given him a tramadol of fifty mg along with the M set of four mg, ma'am. After again uh, we then continued with our assessment. How do we give tramadol? Tramadol we give 50 mg in 100 ml of NS over 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Slow IV. Slow IV. Otherwise, what will happen? The patient will develop acute upset of vomiting mm -hmm. and irritation only. Okay. Uh, so, we have a 26 year old male patient who came with left slow into groin pain. pain. So, what are your differential diagnosis? First differential diagnosis would be the electric calicula, low into groin okay. pain of okay. And next, uh, any left side, it would be having mesentric. Aortic dissection, these all of acute onset pains can be. Young male unlikely to have, okay. okay. Uh, it can be because of a, uh, from skin to uh, inside, it can be anything. So it can be a local pain okay. in that skin okay. region or it can be some back pain. Is it a back pain? Something mm. like that. Mm. Okay. Uh, okay. It can be a uh, low back ache or it can be because of any abdominal okay. pathology. Uh, pertaining to this one, um, renal calculi and the kidney, KUB, what else can be there? Pylonephritis. Pylonephritis can be there. The renal calculi, electric calculi, pylonephritis, anything can present law into groin kind yeah. of. In elderly? In elderly only. The if a patient is having no uh, um, atrial fibrillation and patient comes with left law into. Okay. Then we have to suspect if there is any issue. Uh, there can be any mesenteric ischemia can, can be there, yeah. renal infarcts can be there, then uh, this, any thrombus Most can good. also be there. Okay. And in elderly males, you should suspect aortic dissection. Uh, if it is a female? Female, we have to expect ovarian torsions mm -hmm. or even the... And likely to present with low into groin mm -hmm. pain, their pain will be mostly in the groin. Groin region. region. After even giving the, after giving the tramadol injection, we then proceeded with the exam uh, investigations. Mm -hmm. We first uh, we had started taking the investigation of on examination or examination findings. There was the systemic examination was there is no pale erectus uh, uh, lymphadenopathy any as such bilateral pedal edema. So systemic examination with the GIT, especially the abdominal examination. On inspection, there was this normal abdominal contour with the uh, surgical scars regarding the previous operations mm -hmm. and there is visible peristalsis. Mm -hmm. On and palpitation, there was a left renal angle. Is he having any constipation? Or no history of any constipation. Okay. Anything. On no features suspecting in the cell obstruction of the Nothing. Okay. And in palpitation, there was re left renal angle tenderness pain. Tenderness was present. Mm -hmm. 
and there is no any other palpable mass or anything. In auscultation, bowel sounds were heard. Only suprapubic tendon? No, no suprapubic tendon. She was passing urination, was there oh. no complaint of uh, acute urinary function. So we had the impression of a uh, electric calliculi and we then proceeded with the investigations. Uh, patient with left re mm -hmm. proper left side re mm -hmm. colic, ureteric colic, uh, so we are suspecting calliculi. Calicula. Calicula. First, we the first line of investigation would be an X-ray. Okay. Okay, X-ray KUB. The we have, when we sent for the X-ray, there was no any significant uh, calicle or any present in the X-ray. So second line, we went with an ultrasound investigation. In the ultrasound, we found that in the left kidney there is mild hydroerythronephrosis, mm -hmm. and there was no any evidence of any calicle in the ultrasound. They advised us to go for C. Will CTK. all USC pick up calculates? No, not essentially. Only. Okay. Hydroelectronephrosis that patient. Oh, if it is a calcium stone, they will be able to uh, not pick up, the, we can see the uh, acoustic shadow below the stone. Okay, uh, in stones like uric stone and all, they won't be able to uric see. Acid stone. Uric acid stone. And if the stone size is less than 5 millimeter also, they won't be able to see. Only if there is any hydroelectronephrosis, that only will be visualized. Okay. Then we are, uh, after the ultrasound, because of the mild hydroelectronephrosis, we went for the CTKUB. Mm -hmm. In the CTKUB, we had uh, the visual image of the stone in the left mid ureter calicle mm -hmm. of size of 4 mm. Mm -hmm. Then uh, other investigations apart from the radiological. So this patient is having mid ureter calculate. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the type of stones, different types of stones? Different types of stones, you kidney stones as in. Uh, in the kidney stone, there can be a calicial stone, there can be a pelvic region stone at the or the PUJ pelvic urethral junction stone and the ureteric stone and the vesicular ureteric junction stone. These are the locations where the stone most commonly most commonly it would be the region pelvic, pelvic, zone, junction. pelvic uh, junction. Then we have the uh, then other uh, area of construction is where the pelvic and iliac Ure vessel crosses the uh, ureter. There are three places where mm -hmm. the ureter has constrictions. One, there is the junction of this uh, renal pelvis and the ureter. Second, the, the pelvic inlet. In the pelvic inlet, the common iliac artery crosses the ureter. So, there there is a construction. Third, it is the inlet of the ureter into the urinary bladder. These are the three areas so where these the are the areas where the stone can come. come. What all are the types of stones? The types of stones, ma'am, there are calcium stone, which is the 80% of the cases we find, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Other than that, uric acid stone, cysteine stone and struvite stone. Calcium and struvite stones are radiopaque, which you will be finding in the X-ray itself usually. Mm -hmm. Uric acid and cysteine stones are radiolucent, which are difficult to find in the X-ray. Okay. Right yeah. now, after getting the radiological investigation, we went with uh, blood investigations and uh, for the renal function to check for how is the renal function. Mm -hmm. Along with that, even urine routine was also sent to mm -hmm. see if there is any infection per se. And in the urine routine, we had seen blood 3 plus indicating microhematuria was present. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, there were no pus, increase in pus cells or no leukocytes or no nitrates. So we can rule out there was no so infection. So there was no urinal tract infection. infection. Uh, serum creatinine was 1.37, uh, slightly in the higher range itself, mm -hmm. and uh, USG showing a hydroerythronephrosis as of now. So obstructive, uh, because sort of the obstruction, of, patient uh, is having post uh, uh, post renal failure. Yes, okay. And then proceeding with the medical management with this case, we first started medical expulsive th therapy, mm -hmm. in which we had to give an alpha blocker, just as like just like tamsulosin. Along with that, uh, we can push fluids or we can give diuretics to increase the... Does this patient require admission or not? Then this patient doesn't... Uh, requires admission because there is hydroerythronephrosis along with a higher value of creatinine. Uh, this patient is having uh, uh, acute kidney injury. Yes, yes. Hydroerythronephrosis is there, significant obstruction is there and he had significant amount of pain. pain. So, uh, because of this, this patient requires admission. Uh, what are the other indications for admission? Uh, recurrent... Uh, Stone and uh, recurrent uh, renal colicky pains, mm. and uh, size of the stone actually might be more the size of the stone more than 5 mm. Then we need to go for a DJ stenting, and also that requires admission. Mm. If we are planning for a procedure, along okay. with that, uh, if there is any evidence of history of fever or UTI, oh. any pyelonephritis features, features, then then the cause of stone. So, okay. we uh, you told that there are different types of stone. So suppose this patient is having hypercalcemia, which is causing a calcium stone, then that should be managed. So uh, for that, 
you should admit okay i acute kidney injury if there is any pyelonephritis features or if the patient is having uh, severe pain or refractive vomiting which he is having and, or if the patient is elderly with lot of comorbidities then we will have to decide on admission okay, okay. so if in this case the patient was given uh, medical expulsive therapy of giving alpha blocker just as tamsulosin and pushing the fluids iv ns fluid was pushed through and bolus mm -hmm. it wasn't relieving and he was having an increased amount of pain mm -hmm. so apart from the tramadol injection which we were given for pain relief we increased it to give injection fentanyl of 30 mg which is ideal uh, choice ideal ideal choice would have been uh, nsaids such as ketorolac the They yes. are proved to have better uh, pain relieving than the paracetamol or the opioids in renal policy. Why it was not given? <laughs> this patient is having contraindication. This patient is having creatine, no, yeah. elevated creatine. So this patient yeah. we should avoid NSAIDs. Okay. But otherwise, if the patient doesn't have any renal failure, we should give NSAID should be the first. First. Okay. First. Uh, uh, medical expulsive therapy as the patient is not getting relief. We had. Uh, Uh, discuss with the urology department and they are planned as the stone uh, there is hydroerectile dysfunction you expect that uh, expulsive therapy to act that time itself no it takes uh, uh, medical uh, expulsive therapy is usually indicated if we are planning to discharge this patient yes, if this patient doesn't have any features of infect pyelonephritis ak nothing yes sir just a renal colic which relieved uh, Whose pain relieved after analgesic? If we are planning to discharge from the ER, we can start a medical expulsive okay. therapy and discharge. Right. If we are planning to admit, we won't expect with the one dose of alpha blocker. We will not be expecting. Okay. okay. So the uh, plan for a DJ stenting in this case, no? The, the, uh, in the case of the DJ stenting, the usually they place the two J stent in the from the pelvis to the urinary bladder, avoiding the stone so that the hydroerectile nephrosis water is there. It can be cleared. that they placed and it was successful and the stone was broken and uh, discharged will all the stones come out not as in so it depends essential. upon the constituent of this stone okay so this patient stone came out and what stone was it uric acid uric acid stone, acid stone. Okay. okay so what should be done the we need to check the serum uric acid levels and then uh, if it is high we need to start with the febuxis type such kind of drugs to lower the uric acid okay. and increase uh, dietary fluids must be advised why fluids so that the uh, the amount uh, it will fix the stone yeah that is more important uh, hydration is most, most important. important okay along with that if we are discharging the patient on medical expulsive therapy we need to make sure that uh, as it's an alpha blocker uh, the postural hypotension must be explained to the patient and especially when especially in elderly especially okay. in elderly and the morning when he wakes up we need to ask him to sit for a while for 1 to 2 minutes before he suddenly assess to his washroom so uh, which alpha blocker will be used tamsulosin is the drug of choice 4.4 mg is the usually once in a day doctor once in a day whole day okay. along with that uh, plain drinking plenty of fluids okay. or we can start on diuretics to This patient is having hydroerectile nephrosis. What will happen if we simply start? If we are planning to discharge this patient, and if we start on diuretics without hydration, what will happen? There will be more amount of fluid flow. We are simply giving diuretics. What will happen? The kidney will be trying to excrete everything, and if this patient, the stone is completely obstructing the ureter, the hydroerectile nephrosis will worsen. Okay, so medical expulsion should be. They are along with hydration and diuretics only if the urine output is not coming. Otherwise, we should increase the hydration. Okay. Anything else?